Right now, we're seeing the most frigid temperatures we've seen this season, and it's quickly getting colder. As temperatures drop, being outside for too long can become a matter of life and death. Every year, hundreds of Cook County residents suffer serious injuries due to frostbite and overexposure to harsh weather. Director of Burn Surgery at the Hospital of Cook County, Dr. Stathi Pulakitis, joined us to outline how to keep ourselves and vulnerable community members safe from the cold. Can you tell me and walk me through what frostbite is and how people can get seriously injured from being out in the cold? Of course. So there's kind of two processes that go with frostbite. One is called frost snip. It's a reversible process where you kind of go outside, you get cold, your fingers get numb, but you go inside again, rewarm, and the numbness goes away. Uh, and then there is frostbite, which is the irreversible process, usually where you go outside, you get cold. Now you start to sustain tissue injury because you almost crystallize the blood supply going to end organs, meaning like fingers and toes and legs and ears, nose, all areas that where the blood supply kind of stops. And what happens is, is that with that cold affecting those blood vessels, uh, the blood vessels start to, you know, stop placing blood into that area and the tissues start to necrose or die. What are some um, side effects of tissue dying in say your fingers or in your ears? Well, one of the worst side effects is, is obviously, you know, somebody with a severe cold injury could die from the cold injury itself. Um, but then the, the morbidity or the, the real bad thing about, you know, sustaining frostbite to limbs, et cetera, is, is that they can lose a lot of tissue and end up having amputations as well. What are some symptoms? If you're out in the cold, you've been out for a little while, how can you start to tell if you're starting to, uh, to go past the point of no return and have frostbite as opposed to frost nip? Well, that's the tricky thing is, is that uh, after a little bit of time, maybe half hour, 30 minutes, you start to have uh, some numbness to the tissues. And so you get a false sense of security that you're actually feeling better and that you can continue to stay outdoors. Some of our undomiciled folks, as well as, you know, intoxicated patients or somebody who might have some mental illness, they don't realize that they're outdoors for that long. Or again, they just don't have the opportunity to get to a safe place. And so what happens is, you know, they probably don't sense anything at that point in time. And because of that, they sustain such horrific injuries. So what is the typical time frame that somebody can stay outside in, you know, sub-zero temperatures? The sub-zero really kind of lowers the amount of time that you can spend outdoors. You know, we kind of look at a 30 minute to an hour mark where, you know, you, now you're starting to at risk tissue injury. Mm -hmm. um, after which point in time, now you start to say, you know, get to some of the rewarming centers or, or, or you could sustain permanent tissue loss and potentially even death. So, so we really want to kind of get the message out to make sure that our, our patients are safe and, and our citizens of Cook County are safe because we really, we're here to take care of everybody, but we would prefer to have them all be safe and, you know, without losing their, you know, vital limbs and, and things that are, they're so dependent on in our communities that might be on Damasa. How many people in Chicago are susceptible to sustain like frostbite injuries when it gets this cold? I can tell you just at Cook County Hospital, uh, we probably see over the course of the winter, somewhere between 100 to 250 uh, frostbite victims over the course of the, just the winter alone. Uh, I know um, Loyola and University of Chicago probably see similar numbers as well. So unfortunately, the numbers are quite high. It starts probably around November and we'll carry out amputations all the way into the summertime, believe it or not, for some of the people that uh, just lack access to care and end up, you know, kind of falling into our laps, you know, down the road here. So uh, it's, it's a frightening proposition for us. And, you know, we want to obviously see everybody, you know, do well. And, you know, we uh, are, are hence doing this message to, to get that out there that, uh, you know, you get safe and get into the warming centers or into some of the homeless shelters as best as possible. But again, it's also people who work too, you know, just kind of common sense, layer up, protect yourself. If your gloves are wet or your shoes are wet, change them sooner because you can sustain frostbite at even a higher temperature uh, mm -hmm. than you have like with the cold today. What temperature or around how cold does it have to be for you to start people, for you to start seeing people coming in with injuries? Probably that 40 degree mark, we start seeing people come in with injuries. Now we're, you know, unfortunately going to have a significant uh, a bolus of patients coming in now with this very cold weather that we're going to see in the next 48 hours. There are homeless shelters, as you know, but then the city of Chicago is wonderful. They, they provide us with uh, 
rewarming facilities where people can go into the course of the day to, to get rewarmed and, and get a, a good meal. And ultimately, you know, our hospitals serve as our safety net and Cook County is one of those hospitals that serves as a safety net to, you know, really provide care for the patients when they need it from a medical standpoint. But, you know, if they're seeing that they're unsafe, get to the hospital and we'll try to facilitate how we can get you into a safe uh, surrounding so that you do not sustain an injury. Right. Ultimately, you know, our hospitals serve as our safety net and Cook County is one of those hospitals that serves as a safety net to, you know, really provide care for the patients when they need it from a medical standpoint. But, you know, if they're seeing that they're unsafe, get to the hospital and we'll try to facilitate how we can get you into a safe uh, surrounding so that you do not sustain an injury. Is there anything that people can do at home before going to the hospital Is it in their house? Is there anything that they can do before coming to you? They can do some simple techniques. What we don't want them to do is like try to put hot water on it to try to kind of, uh, you know, melt the ice, so to speak, but because they can sustain a, a deep burn on top of their frostbite injury. So lukewarm water for rewarming, obviously rewarming indoors, getting out of their wet clothing, if they are in wet clothing. If it's something extremely minor, they can do a triple antibiotic on, on a digit or something if it's very small and then follow up with us in our clinic. But ultimately we're here for them if they need anything to, to be able to help them. We wanna really be able to open our arms and uh, welcome anybody that needs care so that we can get them the care quickly because that may save tissue and, and save their life. I think, you know, if you, if you see somebody that's outdoors for a prolonged period of time, or, you know, you might know somebody who might be a, a homeless or, or maybe actual uh, mentally uh, handicapped or mentally challenged, or even, you know, schizophrenic for that matter, um, I'll maybe try to contact some of the warming shelters yourselves to see how we can help the, the individuals so we can get them to safety. We really want to see people do well and, and avoid the hospitals if at all possible, but, you know, if they need them, we're here. Right, but it's just, but it'll take the community being proactive, honestly. We have to be proactive and help one another out and embrace each other and, you know, show love for one another to help each other through this tough time.